I started doing henna full-time as my professional job in 2006. And I started doing a more nine to five job and I actually had a terrible boss. And uh, so I quit my job and decided that I wanted to make a living doing something that was full time that I loved that had to do with art. And henna was something that I'd always been interested in. So I practiced like heck and started a business. So the sugar adds some elasticity to the henna. One of the things when you're applying henna is that you want it to have a real, um, <coughs> we call it a snotty content, but um, you want it to really be stringy so you can get long draping lines. So henna paste, natural henna paste is going to be green in color or possibly brown. There's something out on the market that's not actually henna and it's called black henna, but what it is is hair dye in high concentrations, it's PPD. I mostly am self-taught. There's a lot of information out on the internet if you're willing to go looking for it and a lot of practice, a lot, a lot of practice on paper and things like that. Um, I did go to a henna conference out in Las Vegas and learned a huge amount and that was in 2005. So that was probably the sort of turning point that said, oh, maybe I'll actually make this a job as opposed to just something I'm sort of playing around with. And you want to not get that on your skin because it can cause permanent scarring, kidney and liver failure. I graduated with a degree in um, fine arts. Um, I was a potter as my final senior thesis. Um, I probably, looking back, would have been a multimedia artist if, I, if that was being offered, but they didn't have interdisciplinary at the time. Yep, so I went out to a conference in Las Vegas and um, that's where I learned a huge amount and that's probably the reason that it sparked me to take it to another level and go full time as opposed to just something I was playing with. So natural henna is going to be a deep brown color with some red undertones and you want to make sure that whatever's going on in your skin is going to end up with this nice deep brown color. I will uh, do a lot of family day festivals, um, some music festivals. I travel everywhere from Maine down the coast and all the way into Connecticut. Tend to keep more towards the New England area, but I have traveled as far as Florida. So I think it's confusing to say henna tattoo because henna is its own art form. It's been around for longer than tattooing. 
Um, and it's just that we're in the West and people in the West associate it with um, tattoo, but it, it's, it, it, not that tattoos are bad, I, I have tattoos, but I think they're just very different. Henna is temporary, it's non, it's painless, um, and the designs that you make with it are quite different because of the medium that you're using. Tattoos, you know, they're permanent, or as permanent as your body is, um, and they use color, they're, they're, the designs that you can do with them are very different from what you can do with henna and vice versa, so it's just misleading. So this is mylar, this is what we use to wrap the cones, and it's a very simple process, um, but it's one that takes quite a lot of practice. It's deceivingly easy. So it's basically taking a triangle or a rectangle of mylar and rolling it so that there's a tight tip. And then once you've got that done, you just tape that down. I think one of the things that's so beautiful about henna is that it started with small groups of friends and families who were getting together to do things for celebration. And so they wouldn't have hired somebody to come in and do that. That being said, it, so I think that's great if you want to try henna for yourself. That being said, there is a huge amount of knowledge that you gain when you are studying something. And henna is not as simple as it looks. Well, henna is relatively safe. There's very, very few people in the world who have an allergy. Um, there's something called GP6 syndrome, um, and that's an allergy to fava beans, and if you have that, you don't want to get henna. But that's extremely rare, and especially in the United States. And um, so the things that you need to watch out for if you're going to get a henna done is you want to make sure somebody is using natural henna and not something out on the market called PPD. They're actually uh, wood and they're what people who do encaustics or oil painting um, or decoupage use to do multimedia work on. That's what I use them for. So that's actually paint. It's I do the same process, and a lot of the work that I do is the same process of henna, where I roll a cone, and then I fill it with paint, and I squeeze that out. I use that as my tool. So instead of using a paintbrush, I'm using the cone sort of as a paintbrush. I love that henna is ephemeral. I love that you're having an experience. Both I'm having an experience with the person that I'm applying the henna for, and then after I'm done and I leave, they now have that experience as they're walking through their days. And it changes how you move, it changes how you walk. Um, it's, it's just uh, the fact that it's something that's on your body and you get to have this experience and then it dissipates and goes away. You all, So for me, henna is permanent. It's permanent in, in your memory. It's permanent in how you think. And um, it does it, it does change people's lives.